I'm Vanilla Randall, Professor Vinyan at Vanilla Randall uh, with the Un uh, Professor Emeritus from the University of Dayton School of Law. I want to talk today real briefly about why precedent shouldn't be a winning argument, mainly why we should, uh, Black people and people from other oppressed groups should not make precedent an argument uh, in abortion rights. This is not about arguing whether abortion should be legal or illegal. This is about arguing that we don't want to privilege precedent as a way of winning the argument. So precedent basically is uh, the, the rule that uh, when a judge uh, is confronted with law from the previous cases, that they uh, they uh, that they have to use that law from the previous cases in deciding the current cases unless they decide to overrule the case or distinguish the precedent. So it's based on the concept of stare decisis in which like cases are decided alike um, and higher courts are bound buying lower courts decisions. Um, the idea of precedent. So when we talk about higher courts binding lower courts in the same jurisdiction, what we mean is that uh, within the state system, the state court of appeals and the state Supreme Court bounds the state courts. The su Supreme Court of the United States only bounds state court when you're dealing with United States constitutional issues uh, and United States federal law. If those issues are not implicated in a, in a, a court decision, then the states, uh, the Supreme Court of the United States is, doesn't bound uh, the state Supreme Court the state Supreme Court becomes the highest court within the state system on something that is uniquely state law. Uh, in the federal system, your trial courts is the U.S. District Courts, and, uh, and the U.S. District Courts are bound by the U.S. Court of Appeals. And so, uh, and then of course, the Supreme Court binds the U.S. Court of Appeals and the U.S. District Courts when those courts deal with constitutional law or uh, federal law. Okay, now there's our law in our case comes from three places, four places. You have this uh, Constitution. Constitution of the United States and the state constitution. You have uh, laws, statutes that are passed by the federal government and by the state. And you have regulations that are adopted by uh, agencies uh, under the authority of the state. And then you have uh, court decisions uh, on individual cases. Court decisions uh, is is where the issue of uh, a precedent comes in. The problem I have with precedent and arguing precedent is that the whole American legal system is an English-based system that was designed to protect the existing power structure. It's designed to be slow. It's designed to have incremental small changes. It's designed to uh, constantly refer back to previous laws uh, as a, uh, for making new laws. It implies that uh, the legal decision-making is objective. What can be more objective than saying that there was another case that's already been decided and that that controls the decision-making in this particular instance? It implies neutrality. The judge is not making a decision on their own value system. They're making a decision uh, that is a neutral decision based on previous body of work of uh, law. 
and it implies um, that this is something, a scientific and rational approach, sort of one plus one equals two. Is there a case that's on point, then it controls, and this, how, how more scientific and rational can it be? The problem is, of course, that law is contextual. Uh, all law is context. Uh, even when they talk about the, you have some people who uh, want to apply the law, uh, want to apply the Constitution as the way it was in, uh, meant to be interpreted when it was constructed. Well, that was contextual. And, and that is the clearest evidence of maintenance of a, a white, privileged, male, hierarchy system because the constitution and everything in it was designed to uh, privilege white male landowners. Uh, law is decision making and law is subjective, subjective. Every decision is the result of a choice between values. The more we cover that choice up in what looks to be like objective decision making, the less likely we will be to confront the underlying values that we are being asked to choose between. And finally, uh, precedent can, uh, the, the problem with precedent, precedent is this that whether or not you even have precedent is affected by your access to the legal system and the quality of the lawyers that you get. I am not talking about whether or not your lawyer graduated from Yale or University of Dayton. I don't believe that. That's another discussion. I'm talking about that there is a wide range of legal analytical ability, creative analytical ability, and that, uh, that whether or not a person can argue uh, for creative reasons for why a case should be overturned uh, varies uh, among the lawyers. And so that uh, precedent uh, uh, is affected by that very, by, by having those uh, different quality of lawyers. The advantage of precedent as a concept is that it provides some level of certainty. Find a case on point, discussion stops, analysis stop. The, the argument is don't overrule the law because you have a case. Uh, uh, we can know what to expect from the law and how it's likely to be applied in our case by looking at the cases and knowing that the precedent will be applied. It provides consistency um, among similar cases uh, so that you don't get a case uh, in one jurisdiction, uh, in, in one court in the same jurisdiction handling a case one way and a different uh, court in the same jurisdiction handling the case differently. Uh, precedent allows you to provide some consistency. I provide fairness in, quote, in parenthesis. A, a number of the sources that I looked at talked about fairness as a reason for, as an advantage, although I personally don't like fairness as an idea and concept. One person's fairness is, an, is there's always an alternative to the person who doesn't agree with the outcome. The outcome is unfair. And, and so uh, I find the fairness argument to be uh, something that I tend to try to avoid. But many of the authors that I read talked about um, it. It's just in the fair to have uh, similar cases decided in the same way. Uh, precision. Uh, it, pr principles of law are set 
in actual cases. Uh, and so to that extent, the law can become very precise and, and, and not theoretical. Uh, flexibility, uh, because courts can, uh, Supreme Court, state Supreme Court, and uh, state Supreme Courts and federal Supreme Court can overrule uh, cases, then you have, there are, there's some flexibility and time saving. Um, where a principle has been established, uh, Cases that have similar facts are not likely to go through the, a lengthy process of litigation. And so you have this advantage by using uh, 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 precedent. The disadvantage is the rigidity. Um, we see that in our society, in a lot of places in our society, where principles don't correspond to the really changing circumstances. You have inflexible law, bad decisions get perpetuated because of precedent. And as a black person, we have to, coming from slavery and segregation in, in all of the cases, bad case law against us, uh, we needed the courts to step in and overturn it and not just go along with it because it was precedent. Uh, precedent has some complexity to it. If you, uh, uh, there's a half a million cases, uh, it's not easy to find a relevant case law. Um, you get these long judgments with no clear distinction between comments and the reasons for the decision. Uh, illogical distinctions uh, in the OE to, to get out of a precedent, you have to distinguish the case, a case. And what you see is people, uh, the difference between some cases can be very small and can be illogical. Maybe the biggest issue is the slowness of growth and change in society. Precedent uh, handicaps the society from being responsive to different value systems, different changing uh, interests. I believe that instead of arguing precedent, we should we should argue the put our whole basis for our argument in the continuing value of a law or the need for a law. And I think there can be uh, a, a three-part standard that, uh, and this is something that I've just been working on and uh, it's clearly open for discussion uh, and there may be other parts, but to start off with, in a, in a society that has large groups of people that have been disadvantaged by the law and by the society, before we make any change in any rule, we need to ask whether that rule or change in rule will have a disproportionately negative uh, disadvantage on a protected class. Um, race, gender, color, religion, age, disability, uh, I only include sexual orientation in uh, uh, question marks because not all states currently recognize sexual orientation, but sexual orientation would be one. And we would accept in areas of affirmative action or remedial correction. Remedial correction is the terminology used by uh, the International Treaty on the Elimination of All Forms of racial discrimination to say that it is not racial discrimination to undertake uh, action that has a disproportionate negative impact on the dominant group if that action is undertaken to correct a problem. Uh, 
And so I think that, that we should have that as a factor too. So it would not be reverse discrimination to undertake a rule or change uh, that disproportionately negatively impact white men uh, in order to correct employment problems that black men have undergone. Does the rule or change, uh, change in rule, is it necessary to protect the interests of an individual? So the first rule is about protecting the interests of a group. Uh, the second rule is about making sure that the individual is not lost in this group discussion so that individuals have their right protected as well. And then the final factor would be, is the change or rule or change in rule necessary for the just, fair, and equitable operation of the society? It seems to me that abortion rights people should make your argument along these three factors. Instead of arguing precedent, they should argue these three factors. Does changing abortion rights disproportionately disadvantage a protected class? Does changing abortion rights uh, affect the rights and interests of, of the individual? Does changing abortion rights uh, impact whether or not we will have a just, fair, and equitable society? Uh, for instance, will more um, poor, will abortion be available, but uh, on, only available to people with a certain amount of money, uh, which would make our society unjust, unfair, and unequitable. Um, okay, I, the, the, I'm happy to discuss this further on Facebook. Um, I, you can email me. You can uh, go to my website, racism.org. You can go to Facebook. Uh, or you can uh, uh, tweet me on Twitter. Uh, if you have something, I want to try to do little synopsis like this on race and the law. And if you have a question that you'd like to see me uh, uh, discuss, please uh, email it to me. Have a good day.